This NFL Week Nine Picks Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Colorado, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Tennessee, Virginia, and Arizona. From boosted parlays to in-game odds on every major sport, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign today to receive a one thousand dollar risk-free sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com and start winning today. We're also brought to you by PropSwap. America's marketplace to buy and sell sports bets. Check out the new propswap.com and use promo code SGP on your first deposit to receive up to $500 in bonus cash. We're also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is DFS simplified. Head over to prizepicks.com and use promo code SGP for a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. And of course, don't forget to download the SGPN app, your home for all of our free picks and podcasts. To the sports gamma podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I mean, I guess the football season's still on for some teams. For some teams. Yep. And I think before it, we really one get game out of play out of the seventh wild card spot. If you want to hear the entire breakdown, turn in the Die Hard Eagles podcast. But uh for others, uh it, it's been a week of turmoil. It's been a, a week of news. It's been a week. It of is a massive news week. Our, our sharpness being exposed. We told you Aaron Rodgers was going to be a, a smash DFS play, and now the public knows. Aaron Jones. Sorry, Aaron Jones. Aaron Rodgers not smashing anything <laughs> this week except for his Xbox controller. Smashing homeopathic uh, medicine, which he thought would raise his immunity levels, and uh, unfortunately for Aaron Rodgers, he's out for, with COVID. Now we get to see Jordan Love start all, or do we? Kai, you may want to give it a day if you're if you're thinking about getting down on the Packers. Just give it a day to make sure that Jordan Love doesn't also have COVID because if he was in the room, the QB room, maybe he got it as well. You don't want to be you don't want to end up with a Blake Bortles ticket. That's all I'm saying. So keep an eye out on that. Ton of uh, NFL news. Well, don't just brush over it. Blake sure. Bortles will be the backup quarterback. It sounds like. Yeah. It. Well, he's he's getting signed. Flying there, joining the fifty-three. It sounds like Jordan Love is the only quarterback they have on the roster. They're flying in Blake Bortles. Seems like a done deal. We'll get to that. We'll get to the Von Miller Halloween uh, party story. <laughs> there is just a, a a shit ton of news to get to. We're gonna get to them as I, I think it's just best we get to them as we come up to the games. Oh man. Coming off a fire week. Haven't heard back from WinBet. As far as I know, they're still the presenting sponsor of the Sports Gambling Podcast. Ryan, there was some concern. Maybe they would cancel us after all this free money we're giving away with our NFL picks, college football picks. So much content on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and couldn't do it without our partners over at WinBet. And it's a it's just a great product. Let's be honest. First off, you get the one thousand dollar risk free bet. New users can bet one dollar and win one hundred dollar, and up to a fifteen hundred dollar match bonus. Oh, so much going on over at WinBet. Just added West Virginia. So if you're in the great state of West Virginia, head over there now. Bet big, win bigger with WinBet. All you got to do is download the WinBet app now or visit WINNBet.com and start winning today. Next level professionalism. Thank you, Sean. All You're right. welcome. Uh, d- so, nothing else. We're getting right into it. Yeah, we're not messing around. We did. There's, there's a fun. There's a bunch of fun news stories, but why not save them for when we hit on those games? I don't think I shared this, uh, but a couple weeks back, reconnected with an old uh, fan of the show uh, over social media. Uh, wanted to. I, 
I didn't know this, but my DMs weren't open. Mm. They're open now. So if you want to slide in, slide, slide in. Cream it, DMs. It, it's been fun. Dog. Anyway, he reached out to say, love what we're doing, but didn't appreciate all the other bullshit we talk about that isn't NFL picking. Like, <laughs> if it's not picking an NFL game, he seemed irritated we were wasting our breath on it. So. Well, there's uh, only so many NFL games, and in a perfect world, only the NFL would exist. But there are 365 days I on the calendar. I explained them that college football, college basketball is pretty damn fun. All right, so uh, for this gentleman, we're gonna get right to a Thursday night football. Sean, we're in November now. This is when the season starts to turn. The leaves are coming off trees. Autumn. I mean, I'm, I'm only assuming this. We live in Los Angeles. We don't have to deal with seasons. The Jets are heading to Indy, where the Colts were 14 on the look ahead. But the Mike White experience is worth three and a half on the line. Colts are only minus ten and a half. Oh minus five twenty-five on the money line. Four fifteen is the Jets money line. Forty-six and a half is the total. Ooh, I mean, this is a straight up gut reaction here. But you and I have had a lot of conversations about this Jets team. <clears throat> They're good at home. They're scrappy at home. That's it. And if I hear one more person talking about sometimes all you need is an opportunity when referring to Mike White out of Western Kentucky, Hilltopper. Uh, let's not let's let's not uh, act like this guy was so bad that they had to roll out Zach Wilson from day one. There's a little bit of that, right? We know what happens. The guy comes in for one game. They get yeah. up. They got a Bengals team who was on a natural lull. This is way too much line adjustment. This Colts team, I told you, was on a crescendo. It took all of Carson Wentz's abilities to blow a close game in a game that mattered. Carson Wentz has been pretty dang good in games that didn't matter against bad teams. That the is Colts his time to shine. Are a pro. The Colts have the profile of a team that can run it up. Their defense gives a shit, and their running back could be the best in the NFL and maybe the only right pick. And who should have been the first pick in fantasy this year? Jonathan Taylor. I'm all over the Colts here. I'm going back to the Colts wagon. Four and one ATS over their last five. Last week being that loss. Again, I think when it's not a close game, it doesn't matter. And this Jets team has yet to travel ye well to a road team. I, I just I'm going I'm going against it. A lot to say, but give me the home team on Thursday night. Robert Sala in a fade after a huge win. Opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I I certainly like fading the Jets after a win. Are you going to say this is too many points? It could be too many points, Ryan. What I'm also worried about is uh, shout out to Walter Football with this great nugget there. Teams playing on Thursday are a mind boggling three and twenty four against the spread coming off overtime if their opponent is not. So I think the fact that the Colts played almost five quarters in a drag out match, uh, I, I think that's gonna I, Can I, I counter you for a second? Sure. The Jets played four quarters for the first time this year. <laughs> or maybe the second time. Yeah, no. Obviously, the Jets are not good. Um, you know, they've they've not looked great. I mean, they lost to the Broncos twenty six to nothing in Denver. Not very good there. Uh, coming off their twenty seven twenty four win against the Titans at home, then they went and lost by seven in Atlanta. So them coming off a win is in a great spot. You're probably right, Mike White. Not worth three and a half points. I was God. shocked to see that movement because. This is the kind of game where you're like, oh yeah, it's two touchdowns. Maybe it's thirteen, but for it to for it to not even be in the middle somewhere, like eleven and a half or twelve, it, this tells me that uh, they're expecting to get Jets money. Well, but, and and whoever bet that that guy who bet the one hundred and twenty five uh, oh. to one had a thousand dollars. He, I mean, that, God bless that Mike White bet. That was brilliant because Mike White ended up having the lowest average depth of target for that week. So for you to hit. The most passing yards and a guy who was also the least average depth of target. Well, that means it, it was just check down when you're, city. When your running backs and Jamison Crowder uh, account for like 25 targets, yeah, that's going to happen. The thing with me is uh, this Colts team just doesn't win by a lot of points. Like they don't, I don't know if they have the ability to run up a score. I mean, they beat the Dolphins by 10. They beat the 49ers by 12. They did beat the Texans by 28. So maybe in their house. Maybe that is the case study there. I'm with you. I'll I'll actually go Indy minus 10 and a half, but I'm I'm a little worried that uh this this Jets team is scrappy. And I and maybe I just want to pick the Jets because I want to root for Mike White. We're gonna give out our props and I have some fun uh, Mike White prop bets here. Oh nice. And and clearly Carson Wentz is falling apart. 
But you're right. I mean, this it's is one them bad game. He's coming off well a loss. Year. Maybe even Derrick Henry getting injured gives them a little bit of life uh, in the locker room. But I mean, there's already new. There's already stories about them wanting to bench Carson Wentz, and certainly the fact that he's gonna, cl- you know, next few games here hit that 75 percent snap count. <sighs> Got to be pretty, uh, pretty interesting. They also have the Jets and the Jags uh, for the next couple games, and then then you have Bills, Bucks. But yeah, I mean, this is a team that you know they've they've had only four home games, and three of them were against the Seahawks with Russ, the Rams, and the Titans. So. When they did have a trash team come to town, they took care of business, thirty-one to three. So, that's what I think. This is going to be. This is going to be that kind of game. Uh, let's talk props, Sean. Let's talk props, and of course, we're uh, they're back, baby. Prizepicks.com. Oh man, of course, uh, Prize Picks so fun for the National Football League. Also got you covered for college, but really, uh, they got a ton of NBA stuff going on. Obviously. We got the NBA gambling podcast. We got the prop cast. So if you like NBA DFS, they got you covered there as well. We're going to be using some prize picks lines here again, over under, and you can combo uh, these player props, $20 uh, wager on all three of them. You go three and oh, you get $100. Yes, please. L F G and uh, yeah, they got a ton of sports, but uh, NBA is really popping off. I'm going to go with my first, or I'll, I'll just give you all my uh, prop bets here. I got Michael Pittman over 65 and a half receiving yards. He's Carson Wentz's guy. And, and it looks like T Y Hilton's going to be out. He's going to continue to get a bunch of looks. I also like Ty Johnson over 18 and a half receiving yards mm. mentioned it. Mike white is a check down machine and uh, Ty Johnson could easily benefit. I mean, I think he had like 70 something receiving yards last game. I think getting 18 and a half is pretty easy for him, especially if the Colts end up getting out uh, ahead two, three touchdowns. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he, he had enough targets last, last week to do it for sure. And uh, last one is Mo Ali Cox over one and a half receptions. I I mean, the targets oh, are there. God damn it. He only, he had zero catches last week, had the targets. Uh, I think him getting the two catches is very reasonable. So what do you got? What do you got for your uh, prize picks props here, Ryan? Uh, for the prize picks props, that's a that's a bit of a tongue twister. I I, I think I'm I'm just going with the uh, the over machine. I don't know what it is about the this this game, but I, I found myself going to overs more than unders. Jonathan Taylor, fourteen and a half receiving yards. Hmm. They they are dialing up at least one play a game to this guy, and it's all he's always wide open. It's a wheel route. It's a screen pass. Yeah, he's been getting worked into the passing game a little bit more, so I like that. Uh, Pittman, I'm with you. I went catches though, five and a half. Uh, he's coming off a 15 target game, so sure, there's going to be some regression, but we're talking about a guy that's probably going to finish the season now getting double digits as well, long who, as Carson. Who Lentz else is, out is he going to throw to? They're they're clearly, yeah, clearly it's, it's they're connected. Pittman and it's everyone else, and then for the last one. Uh, I'm gonna not go to Ty Johnson. I'm gonna go to Michael Carter because it seems very clear that Michael Carter is is he's very involved in the passing thought, game as well. I wanted. I, I don't think I saw Jamison Crowder on Prize Picks. That's where I was gonna target originally for the catch prop. But I'll go Michael Michael Carter. Four and a half receptions. This feels a little. It's high. I'm buying it high. But as long as I expect them to be trailing in the game like they were against the Bengals, you saw the offense. Mike White has no problem seeing if yeah. his reads there and if not going to Carter, going to Ty Johnson. So I'll take over four and a half catches. So remember, I hit all three of those, you can turn 20 into $100. First touchdown bets, I got Mike White again. Love Mike White rushing touchdowns <laughs> or Mike White, essentially Mike White anytime touchdown. Ryan. What is the Mike White on anytime? You know, I, I don't have that number in front of me, up. but uh, for first touchdown, he's forty to one, six fifty anytime. Definitely bet. I mean, anytime a quarterback uh, that you think is actually going to have rushing action around the goal line, which is most of these guys, if it's over three fifty anytime, you, you're taking it auto play. Uh, in this game, Carson Wentz is also four to one anytime, which not bad, not horrible. I guess how many rushing touchdowns Mike White had senior year, Western Kentucky. Eight. Six. Mm. Six. Come on. The rushing touchdowns will be there. Keelan Cole Sr., who's getting involved a little bit more in the passing game. First touchdown. He almost got one last week. 35 to one. Almost got one. I feel like he's due. One uh, person on Twitter is upset about that. His name's Adam. Oh, I, I, <laughs> shout out to Adam Pelletier, our uh, SGPN fantasy football editor. He's been trumpeting the Keelan Cole narrative all season. Had him in best ball, I'm sure. 
Mo Alley Cox on the Colts side, 14 to one. I mean, Jesus you got to play Long. him. Cox. And I'm going uh, double tight end. Give me Jack Doyle as the other one, 22 to one uh, for the Colts. Kramer, what do you got? You got to play Carson Wentz. I mean, I, I, although no, fuck him. the way they the way they play around the goal line, it's a complete wild card. I'm with you, Mo Ali Cox again. He was getting targets. Uh, this although it's it's it was really hard for me to not just say Michael Pittman. He's only 750, but goddamn, he like Carson Wentz is staring at him. But yeah, I'll go Ali Cox. I'll go Carson Wentz at 22 to one. Mike White at forty to one, as you mentioned, and then uh, Tyler Croft, mm. their tight end, thirty-five to one. The price was right. My hashtag hashtag Dejans only prop bet Mike White two touchdowns, eighty-two one. So oh he's gonna run God. two. Yeah, I mean QB sneaks, maybe a couple scrambles. Yeah, I, I, I mean, again, we don't have much of a profile on this guy. Eighty to one for a quarterback to get two touchdowns. I, I. These quarterbacks to get two touchdowns, I think, are uh, live dogs. And we're gonna hit one of these. All right, give me Jonathan Taylor, two hundred yards rushing, twenty-five to one. Really? Yeah. Okay. Really, because yeah. the price is so good, or really because you, you're shocked to hear me throw out a Jonathan Taylor to go? Has anyone gone over two hundred yet this year? Uh, I would imagine someone has. I, I, don't, I can't. Two. I don't know off the top. But of This my head. feels like a Jonathan Taylor forty-point fantasy performance. Yeah. Captain's chair, baby. All right, we're done with Thursday night football. Let's go. Locked it up. We're both on the chalk. Gave out some sweet props. Let's move to Sunday. Houston, the Texans, they're heading down to Miami, where the Dolphins are minus six and a half, minus two ninety on the money line, plus two forty five for the Texans. Forty six is the total. Uh, is Tyrod going to be playing? Seems to be the big question, right? And uh, it looks like he's might be trending to playing. This is an interesting spot because can you re the one in seven Miami Dolphins are almost laying seven points. Houston's been turning into a really bad team. Yeah, especially Miami on the road. actually has worst uh, weighted defensive uh, DVOA. Like Miami's defense is actually worse than the Texans. I think it is like you know adding a little bit of context there. They they've been a much better defense with all of their defensive backs. In fairness, they've they had some bad performances, uh, some blowouts when they were missing those guys. But uh, to your point, can you really lay this many points? Now, getting out of the football game itself, you have the narrative of Tua now has this audition. Yeah, uh, this is game one. We saw how good Devonte Parker looked. Now you have kind of that full complement of weapons finally, and you're going against a bad team. And so this really could, I, I threw it out on the DFS show, right? Like Tua is my double stack because I think this could be a show out game. We've seen Houston curl up and do nothing on the road before they're trading their veterans. Players are reportedly not happy about it in the locker room. As much as I love Tyrod, I don't know if Tyrod is good enough to overcome a whole room of quit. And, and you know how quit works, Sean, well, and a little bit of quit turns into a lot of bit, a lot of quit. Especially when you're on the road in Miami, and you have a buy coming up. I th I feel like the fact that yeah Houston has a buy like they they can already pack their bags. You asked me to look into this. Uh, teams looking into the buy are seven and ten ATS. Now some of these teams played each other, yada yada yada. But if you look uh, down the stretch, two and four over the last two weeks. So perhaps as teams maybe a little bit more know their fate, and maybe that's the next level of analysis. See how these bad teams are doing, looking into the buy. Yeah. Um. I I would. I, I'm gonna take Miami minus six and a half. You the, have to. The issue is though. No. Once they name Tyrod the starter, I'm gonna be super pissed that I'm that I'm actually betting on Tua. Every time I've picked Tua, I've regretted it. I think you lay the points because it, it, it's six and a half, and I think it's going to be you know seven. What? I'm taking I'm taking Houston plus this, six. You and know half. this is going to seven. Yeah, but I'm going to go Houston plus six and a half, strictly out of my I, I can't take Tua. I just can't do it. I, I'm They're going to win by four. Well, you all. I mean, you mentioned to like how bad they've been. They've also been really bad against the spread, which means there's there's got to be value. Well, you could say that for Houston too. What is Houston's number against the spread? I'm going to pull it up. They're um, also really bad against the spread. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about a Miami team that I believe is only covered once. And so there's the obvious, like, yeah, oh, oh, oh I'm sorry, Miami 2 5 and 1 against the spread. Uh, Houston, where, where are our Texans? Oh, 
four and four ATS. So uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm laying the points here. I think two is going to have a good game and I just, I, I got to see Houston score a little bit to believe it. Next up Denver heads to Dallas. This was seven on the look ahead. It's now 10 minus four forty on the money line plus three fifty for the Broncos. 49 and a half is the total. Sean's getting hot because he knows it's time to talk about the Cowboys offense. Dak is a full go. Uh, they are still undefeated against the spread. They are in a great spot here playing a team that just traded a hall of fame, like all time Bronco Von Miller. That can't be good for team chemistry, team morale. You got to like the offensive pieces coming back. Judy got to be healthier. Uh, Albert. Oh, this could be the breakout game with Fant out. I just, I don't like, how does this work? If this turns into a shootout, I mean, Dallas's defense continually appears to be a good defense. Yeah. And it, it's, it's not like Denver has been, sh- been showing out right now. They, they, no, I think we just have to lean into Teddy Bridgewater against the spread on the road as a dog. Like he, he is just a covering machine, Teddy Bridgewater. And I, I think there is a path where they can slow this game down. Uh, Dallas, their weakness on defense, if they have one is stopping the run again. That's why the Eagles, when they played him, they should have ran the ball a bunch more. Denver has Javante Williams. They have Melvin Gordon. I think yes. if they pound the rock, get the ball in the running back's hand, slow the game down. Uh, they can make this a game. I uh, I agree. Like Von Miller not being there, Chubb being out. I think their cornerbacks well, are okay. Are we going to talk about the Halloween party? Yes, we will have. We have to talk about the Halloween party. Uh, so part of the reason, apparently, why Von Miller got traded, quote, a source with direct knowledge of the situation, said that Von Miller became upset when teammates declined to kick in for his annual Halloween party, a massive affair with the six-figure price tag. That this year featured Quavo from the hip hop act Migos. So apparently, this was like a thing that really it happens fractured every year. the locker room. D- do you believe that? Do I believe that? Yeah. Why would I not believe that? because oh, I mean, it, it it would explain why you just ship your a Hall of Fame defensive lineman all world. Yeah, they realize he's not going to be here next season. Why not get some assets for him? And apparently he's being a huge pain in the ass in the locker room. And I would go so far as maybe this is a get up game. Maybe this is a game mm. where the defense goes, you know what? We don't need Von Miller. We don't need Von Miller bullying us to get dressed up like uh, Wolverines and paint our faces. Uh, We're grown men. We're a defense. We're the Denver Broncos. We don't need some guy with like weird lenses. Who's you know, takes a bunch of ecstasy and gets caught uh, using a whizinator and failing his drug test. Underrated We're men story in the trenches. Grind it out. Yeah, Google the uh, Von Miller whizinator uh, ecstasy story. I think there's a world where th- Von Miller was apparently a oh, problem in the oh, locker room, bring it and they're the rallying there. around <laughs> without any of uh, Von Miller. And the, the Cowboys it. in cruise control. I, I love it. Are uh, going to get snipped. Ten points for a Broncos team that's competent. I think it's a little high. It is a, a non-conference home game for the Cowboys. I wrote that yep. down. I was really reaching for reasons to, uh, other than Teddy Bridgewater just being a covering machine in this type of spot. Uh, the other side of it is too, like if whatever's going on with Dak, I wonder how yeah, I wonder how easy it would be to re-aggravate, re-injure. Because mm. to your point, if there's going to be a, a room that gets up a little bit, it's going to be the defensive line room. Because you know what that coach is saying. No Hall of Famer, no fucking problem. Yeah, may, Next as well, man up. may, may as well go. may as well not make the trip to Dallas. Football. Yeah, let's go. I mean, of course we're not taking Dallas. Uh, although it's been zero and seven this year, we're due, Sean. We are due. Yeah, uh, we are. Uh, last thing I I'd, I'd comment is, um, grown grown man who's going to get upset about a Halloween party. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this uh, is 2021, <laughs> peak 2021, uh, peak football. 2021. Uh, and you wouldn't believe it, Sean. But what what percentage of uh, the the money do you think is? I- I'm shocked. It's only 70 percent on the Cowboys, right? Really? Now. So uh, there are people like us seeing the value potentially uh, in this spot. Uh, let's go. Next game. Minnesota. They're heading to Baltimore. Baltimore coming off the bye, Sean. We've been mentioning this, but teams off the bye three and seven against the spread so far this year. 
Uh, Minnesota coming to town plus six, plus two twenty on the money line. Baltimore minus two sixty. Forty nine and a half is the total. Ah man, I, you know as much as we just want to chalk it up to uh, Kirk Cousins in prime time, this Vikings team has been Jekyll and Hyde, and I. I've we've been in this spot before and and I told you when we broke down the Bengals versus the Ravens the game before the bye that I thought I was going to like Baltimore like them as a home team think they're generally undervalued as a home team and they usually take care of business against bad teams. The problem was the Bengals aren't a bad team. The Vikings might be a bad team. And I think uh initial instinct on this game was like oh interesting Vikings coming off that loss this is a good spot. Uh, not so fast. John Harbaugh, he's an Andy Reid disciple. He's Nine strong, and five strong, against the spread off the buy. Strong off the buy, thank you. And he uh, absolutely, I, I like this spot for the Ravens, mostly because we see, uh, and, and a lot of people took some time during the bye week to point out that Lamar is having a good passing year. Yeah. The Ravens are having a good passing year, and what happened last week? Well, as you pointed out, Carson Wentz, uh, unrelated steps stepbrother, uh, just shredded. The Vikings pass defense. So I think Lamar. The more I look at this, the more I love uh, your Lamar stack uh, in fantasy. Danielle, Danielle Hunter, uh, one of the better Vikings defensive linemen. He's out, and that's huge because if the Vikings had one issue, it was maybe uh, on the offensive side. Is their offensive line? I'm a little worried about the the Ravens defense, but I think uh, with you know two weeks to prepare for Kirk Cousins, they can. Uh, I, I think the play actually is not to blitz because Kirk cousins actually decent against the blitz, but to sit back. And that's kind of what the Cowboys did against them. I don't know if they have the same uh, secondary that the Cowboys do. I think this game could kind of be a little bit of a shootout and, and high scoring. Interesting note here from moon offs ref report, oh. Carl Cheffers seven and one against the spread for road teams. Oh no. This kind of feels like the Vikings lose a like miss a uh, field goal at the end of the game and lose by three, like a chance to tie. Uh, but I just can't I can't take Vikings right now because it did feel like they kind of lost their season uh, there Sunday night. I'm gonna go Baltimore minus six, but I don't feel great about it. I I think this game has a chance to be high scoring. And I didn't want to bring this up, but they do have a, a second road game next week mm. in LA. And you know, Zimmer, he might have a hunting trip planned for a good old <laughs> Los Angeles uh, likes the ladies out here. Uh, Sean, shout out to the YouTube chat. Nick uh, is asking, is Bateman a good pick for any time TD? Uh, yeah, I certainly like them to continue to work him in more and more. I mean, the preseason talk was all about how good he looked as a receiver. So Absolutely would jump on that. I'm with you, Sean. Let's lay the points with the Ravens. Feel feels like one of the easier spots of the week to me. Uh and Nathaniel in the YouTube chat says, I, I need an excuse to give my wife to spend $180 on the freeze pipe gravity bong. Help me out. Well, first off, if you use a uh, promo code SGP, it is no longer $180 as you get a nice little uh, discount mm. on that. And uh, Nathaniel, I don't know how old you are, but I would imagine maybe get some lower back pain, some some knee issues, and just you know, spit it to your wife as it's a uh, homeopathic medicine. I feel like wives are into that idea. Go, oh man, honey, I I could I've been taking a ton of uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen. I heard it's really bad for my liver. I'm going to switch to a more natural remedy and I need the freeze pipe because you know, the freeze pipe filters out a lot of toxins. Just mention how it removes toxins. Uh, wi wives love that kind of talk. It's basically like pomegranate. It, it's got, it's we got what about weed. <laughs> I mean, look, I, as someone who has converted people in the past, the key is to focus on the pain and the fact that pain management is something that every human is going to have to go through as they get older. And we don't want to rely on these filthy, filthy pharmaceutical companies with the drugs that will destroy your stomach. You need yeah. your stomach, Sean. You need it. Oh, I need my well, the stomach. freeze pipe is trying to find you a toxin free way to get medicated. All right. That was a fun one. Yeah. Bateman, anytime touchdown, take it. Ravens minus six are both on it. All right, let's go. Pa Pat Patriots Patriots. They head down to Carolina where the Panthers are three and a half point home dogs plus plus one sixty on the money line minus one eighty. For the Patriots, forty-one and a half is the total. This look ahead was two. It's now three and a half. It tells me Darnold. the The difference between Darnold and XFL legend PJ Walker is one and a half points through the key number of three. 
as, as much as I love PJ Walker, uh, he didn't look, he has, he didn't look good coming no. in in relief. Perhaps he can look better coming in with a week of practice with Christian McCaffrey behind him. But goddamn, Belichick against basically a rookie and PJ Walker, scary. Breaking news: According to ESPN, Carolina Panthers Christian McCaffrey hamstring could return from IR to play Sunday. So it seems like it's trending in the right direction. And, and I well, think they did the procedural shit to like activate him or whatever. So. Okay, so that's good. Um, you know, the movement across the, the key, the key number there. I, and you didn't mention, I think this is a nice revenge game for Gilmore who kind of got run out of town by Belichick. I think he's going to get up for this game. He had an interception in the Atlanta game. And I think he, he looked good. Honestly. I think he could have a, a big play here and that could be the difference. I mean, obviously you're right. PJ Walker is essentially a rookie quarterback. You like the Patriots chances and Belichick against him. However, I, I I think the back-to-back road game for the Patriots could come up to uh, you know could come to to bite them in the ass oh. and and Mac Jones again as much as it was awesome for my Mac Jones rookie of the year really he didn't look amazing he missed some kind of easy throws that he probably should have still think he's the best rookie quarterback uh, however I I think you kind of got to go Panthers home dog here at three and a half uh, back-to-back road teams. Updated record, Sean. Nine and or twenty and nine against the spread. Eighteen and eleven. Oh yeah, straight that's up. right. It actually works the other way. It, it it's been middling the last couple of weeks, but as you can see, season long, we're talking about a trend that's north of sixty six percent. There, pretty good. Dogs are coming back though. That's what that's what uh, dogs are back in style. Dog. And I and I think this is a good spot for the Panthers to get up. And uh, I, you know, especially with Belichick, like Belichick's really good at taking away one thing. And I think McCaffrey, if Christian McCaffrey, well, but if, if they take out McCaffrey, then I think DJ Moore is going to have some opportunity or vice versa. If they take out DJ Moore, then Christian McCaffrey is going to have some opportunity. I think if both play, which it looks like it's trending in that direction, it feels like a really gross spot to be in. uh, Honestly, It, it, because We've seen what this Panthers. I just don't. They don't. They just. His Patriots team doesn't strike me as a non-conference road favorite. Worth getting down on. So you're on New England minus three no, and a half. Right? No, I can't do it. But I mean, we. I just. This offense has been so down. I. I do. I do worry a little bit. Uh, but fuck it. You're. You're right. We should. We should take the long turf. We didn't bring it up. Is the turf longer in Carolina? Yeah. No, they switched it New, out to field turf in New England, which increases injuries. Ryan, you know that. Uh, fuck! I can't. I you know I I gotta give me the Patriots. All right, give me the pay. I this is not a game I'm I'm looking it's to bet a baby on. But fucking wheel, man. They might have like they might have turned the corner on something here. And Carolina looked bad against Atlanta. They they're a bad team. Buffalo, Jacksonville. Oh, we're heading down to the hot. Josh Allen in the hot tub, Sean. Buffalo minus <laughs> eleven on the look at. Now it's fourteen minus one thousand on the money line. Jags are six and a half to one to win a single football game. Forty eight and a half is the total. Urban Meyer, Jacksonville Jaguars. God hates Jags. Full fade mode. I don't know how. I mean, honestly, James Robinson, MVP of that fucking team. They yeah, look like got shit. Some heart. They look like shit without him. Uh, and Buffalo clearly aware. Josh Allen clearly a gambling man because he was trying <laughs> to cover that spread last week. Uh, I mean, I, I don't really know what the handicap is uh, other than we're on the chalk, uh, knowingly taking a public side here, a public uh, road team, a public road team, and the, and the and the Bills have the Jets on deck, so it's not like they're. Oh, that's a big look at spot for them. No, no, it's not at all. And the other thing is, I mean. Th- this Jags team, they were down 24 nothing pretty quick. And they they barely got six or what they got seven points. They barely got that in garbage time against Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks. Can, can I tell you this feels I, I just think Josh Allen's gonna come in here and and cause some problems. This feels a little bit like when the Rams played Detroit. Detroit gave them a little trouble, but at the end they pulled away. Did, well, in Rams, this analogy, Buffalo Miami is the game where Miami gives them some trouble. At the end, they pull away, and now that they've been woke up, they woke up after that bye. And there were, there, you know what the coach says after that game? That's what happened when you when you start slow, when you're asleep. 
We're going to Jacksonville this week. Let's make sure we don't start slow. Let's put this team away by halftime. And I think it's the same thing. I think we're taking Buffalo first half. I think this is going to be an absolute. I mean, this is a 40 to 14 game. Yeah. No, I I just don't see how do the Jaguars hang? And again, I, as I pointed out, they're coming off the bye last week and in a rare case, this definitely hurt them because they got more time with Urban Meyer. Urban seems like a real shitty coach. He, I mean, he's completely checked out. He is. Uh, he's trying to get it's back amazing. to Ohio. He's, it's amazing he's kind of made it this long. And the Bills, I think, are just they they need to keep pace in the AFC so they can get that number one seed because they don't have the tiebreaker yeah. against the Titans. Eighty five percent of the money on the a hundred percent of the money should be on the Bills. What are we talking about? Uh, I kind of agree with that angle. All right. Moving on, and the more I thought about it, Zach Moss kind of interesting uh, DFS play. And it's funny because I have him in a couple of lineups because a he gives you a nice uh, bit of leverage off the Josh Allen, off of Josh Allen experience, stuff. but also like maybe this is the kind of game where we just see them run the ball in the second half just because Cleveland heads to Cincinnati. The Bengals they were two and a half on the look ahead and still a two and a half uh, popped at three a little bit, still two and a half as we pick it now minus one thirty five on the money line Browns plus. 115 46 and a half is the total early in the week instincts were this is when I saw three I was like I don't know if this is going to hold three I feel like people are going to come in on the bangles and then as again another game where as I started getting into the handicap I wondered like too much preseason bias still and then the Odell news broke and then my pick was made Odell's off the team give me the Browns they're the better they were the better team before the year uh, we saw the Bengals get a little bit exposed in a sleepy spot last week, and most importantly, Odell's off the team. How many times, Sean, did you tell yeah, me that he was the he's reason? A he's not on the team anymore. We're going to see a relaxed. You heard Baker. A conversation would be nice. That's something <laughs> your wife says to you. A conversation would be. It nice. sounds like something Baker would say in the. This uh, team is going to the book club. Baker is going to have the best game of his season. Showing out here, I I do like Nick Chubb and DFS a little bit. He is gonna show the fuck out this week. He is gonna outperform uh, Joe Burrow, and this Browns team is going to handle the Bengals uh, because you have to remember in the in the pantheon of the AFC North, these are the doormats, and the and guess what? Cleveland is like you know what? At least we got to beat the fucking Bengals every year, and so this game I think has grown to be, to some significance for them. Because they need that win. So lots of words to say. Odell's gone. Give me the Browns plus two and a half. Uh, the, you can handicap this game if you want, but I deleted every note I had. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm the Brown, same way. Oh. I like the Bengals a lot coming into this, but then the them deciding not only did they not just cut Odell, they they put Odell in timeout and basically said, You're not a part of the team. But you're also just not going to be playing in the NFL. Well, We're going to send you home. Yeah. We're not going to trade you. We're going to send you home. You want to be set free. Uh, LeBron James is saying free Odell, free receiver and, one. And first of all, shame on you. Like I'm a big, you big LeBron fan here. But get the fuck out of football if that's going to be your hot <laughs> take, bro. Like you're you're not going to make friends backing up Odell Beckham in, in this spot. You know who I haven't heard speak out. His BFF Jarvis Landry. Mm. What do you think he's thinking about? Because that guy's a dog. He's someone you come to play dog. with. So the fact dog. that he's not saying a goddamn thing says a lot. Uh, Browns also six and two against the spread in their last eight road games. For what it's worth, uh, you know you can you can break this down. I think the Bengals. If you look at trends, they're 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 a nice bet this this week. But all, everything's out the window. Everything's well, and, out I, and I think the uh, the Cleveland defense can help carry this team. Number one in uh, rush defensive, uh, Ooh. defensive uh, DVOA. Yeah, or gotcha. uh, am I looking at? What, hold on. I'll help you. I'll help you validate this. I may have been looking at the wrong number, Ryan. Goddamn. Uh, no, I had. Uh, uh, wait, no, Cleveland's number three. In a rush defensive DVOA, that. the number one in offensive DVOA of rushing. So I think it's going to be a ground and pound game. Uh, but you're right. I think this is a motivated Baker. Baker is the one that's actually freed because they got rid of goddamn Odell Beckham. So you're right. Give me the Browns plus two and a half. It's about having a healthy offensive line. It's about the team when, like, when they're able to run the ball. Which, by the way, number one rush DVOA on offense without their their two running backs really healthy together for many games this year. So. 
All right, we got that out of the way. Which, by the way, pretty funny that uh, Beckham's dad got him put into purgatory <laughs> by the Browns, who are literally at the NFL purgatory team. Raiders, they're heading to New York, the big city, to take on the Giants. Coming off that heartbreaking Monday night oh, defeat, come on, was it at the hands of the you headsets? Ah. Now, right. now right. this is this is my issue with Joe Judge. If you're gonna lean in, all oh, football guy, we're building culture. We're running laps when we fuck up. Dan, you're gonna be a whiny baby about your headset not working. Oh, that's why they, we can't call timeout. That's not fair. They're not playing fair. I'm telling the NFL, you're not playing fair. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. If you want to be tough football guy, if you want to be, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. You want to be John Madden? John Madden didn't need to wear some goddamn headset. Why even wear? Why you even need to wear a headset if you're a real man, yeah. a real football coach, real, Joe Judge? Real man like Brady Hoke. Remember that Michigan head coach <laughs> refused to wear the headset. Uh, Raiders, they're coming to town off the bye week, minus three on the road, minus one fifty five on the money line. Giants plus one thirty five. Historically not a good road team, Sean. I think five covers in their last seventeen tries at home. Forty six and a half is the total. Uh I, I, I don't know. Um th- this is a tough handicap because I don't know what the Raiders team is thinking. Uh post Henry Ruggs no longer being on the team. And, and and yeah, I mean, if you didn't hear the the latest news, apparently he was going 156 miles per hour, uh, crashed into uh, another vehicle. He was driving a Corvette. Uh, he killed a, a woman and a dog, and uh, the I'm sure the other passenger is pretty banged up. I mean, he's facing some serious jail time. Uh, the Raiders released him two to 20 years. They said. Yeah, I I don't. Uh, it's pretty obvious, but he's never going to play in the NFL again. Uh, even worse, apparently they found some emails where they where he called uh, Goodell an anti football pussy. So he's really really in trouble. <laughs> That's what got him cut. Uh, I mean, and and like the sub the sub sub subtitle was like there was a loaded gun in the car too. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. It, it, crazy story. And uh, obviously feel bad for uh, the victims there. I mean, geez, what it, the I don't know if you saw the photo, but the car w- was lit on fire. So it, I mean. I don't want to speak for the incident, but it sounded like the guy probably burned alive or the woman. Jesus Christ. Uh, I mean, th- this is one of those situations where it's like, man, how do you not just like, you, like maybe if you're in the, like, how do you not just get a ride? I don't know. Whatever. I, uh, such a simple the, solution. The handicap though, I think is like, where will this Raiders team be? Yeah. Because um, you know, do I mean, they, they, are they, they playing for the victim? Like, are we hearing that the Raiders are dedicating the game to they, the victim? Are we, are we doing, is there some sort of like, you know, emotional thing that's going to drive them get up for this game. Well, and they or is a, this going to be like a holy shit? They did a good job of rallying around the Gruden thing. But again, like it, this thing is totally different uh than the Gruden thing. That the Gruden being, thing was they maybe didn't like him. Yeah. <laughs> and so I and by all accounts it seemed like they liked rugs and uh you know, he was texting with uh Carr and Waller before he took off. Um oh, Jesus. Waller is back as far as like stuff on the field. Uh, Darren Waller is back. He's off the injury report. That's huge for our big uh, money fantasy league. I think he is a big game. And Ryan, you you started this podcast. I mean, you're wearing a goddamn uh, camouflage uh, it's a, it's Carmelo a York, it's jersey. A you're out on the season, and I think this New York uh, Giants team is out all as well. We said who, bad who said who said I was out? Oh, you I, did. So I was divested right now. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I mean the same handicap that we had for the uh, Texans. Now, granted, I did eventually take the Texans, uh, but I said this: but though, bad son. teams with a buy coming up completely check out. And the stat that I can't get away from is the New York Giants at home against the spread. That's bad. <laughs> Since 2017, they're 10, 25, and one. The the 49ers are the second closest at 13, 21, and one. So I'm not going to pick the Giants at home. Now I should have I should have had them last week against the Chiefs. That was a very obvious hey get up and and pretend like we might be in this game but lose. That's 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 just textbook uh, modern Giants football, but not here, not at home, not when it's only a field goal. You you talked about a lot of stuff. You didn't mention two things. One, uh, we get to talk about Zay Jones again. If yeah. you don't know, look up his incident in a hotel slash condo in Los Angeles from 2018. Pretty wild, but also. The Raiders have Kansas City next week. This is a look ahead spot. That's the game that matters. Mm. The Giants are winning this game because here's the weird Raiders thing. Are, Raiders are bad coming off the bye. Here is the weird spot uh, that I struggle with here. 
for whatever reason, when I read, uh, read the beat writers, talk about it, the vibe, when I hear the players talk about it, for some reason, this team se- still seems to be playing for one another. Now say what you will about their output. Not very good. Decision-making has been poor. The offensive risk taking taking is, is that of a, a, a seventh grade fucking dungeons and dragons nerd who sits in the corner, afraid to talk to anyone. No! The, the the play calling where they're obviously but drawing t- up plays short of the third down marker. It's not a team I can bet on. But I, I don't know if I can back this Raiders team as a favorite in this type of spot because I I don't know what kind of effort you're going to get showing up here. And I and I of all things I trust that this Giants there's, team. There's a lot of variables in this situation, yeah. both outside and <laughs> and inside the the game itself. I'm going to just trust yeah. in my I heart of you. hearts that the Giants are going to show up at home. That's fair. Look ahead to Kansas City, and the Raiders are getting eighty percent of the early money as a road favorite. Which, <laughs> woo! All right. Next Ra- up, Raiders roll big, according to Fade Colby twenty four dot seven. Un, not sure if he's the same as uh, Fade Colby sixty nine. Do we have multiple Fade Colby? <laughs> All right, Sean. Last early game, uh, God's eye will be happy. There are eight games. But as we mentioned, there's also a Formula One race, so the God's Eye will have the tier out for Sunday. Atlanta, New Orleans. This won't be on the tier. This is going to get a prime TV. This is a fun game. Saints minus six, minus two fifty on the money line. Falcons plus two ten. Forty two and a half is the total. This Atlanta team is just bad, and and, and I think the, the the key caveat is when Calvin Ridley's not been there, they've. It's been very easy to take away their their key weapons on offense, with the exception of Weapon X, aka Cordell Patterson. I I worry here though because I'm laying points with either Trevor Trevor Simeon or, or Taysom, Taysom, Hill. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, they they grind it out. I, I would say this for Atlanta. Ridley was like a late scratch for them, so I think now at least they have time to draw up a game plan without uh, Ridley being in there. I think they knew he wasn't going to be there last week though. Okay. Well, just to throw that out there. um, I, I think this is a massive letdown spot for the saints. I mean, they were going nuts. They were celebrating. They beat the super bowl champs. I think this is a letdown spot for the saints. I mean, and I, it's the Gatorade narrative. We have a Gatorade narrative. When people act like they won the Super Bowl, you fade them the following week. And the Saints, to me, that was a Super Bowl win. Jameis mm. gets knocked out mid game. Trevor Simeon comes in, somehow leads them to victory. Did Trevor Simeon look particularly good? No. Do they, do they just have the Saints number for whatever reason? Yes. Uh, will they have? Will they struggle with Cordero Patterson? Yes. Uh, is ref Alex Kemp six and one against the spread and straight up for road teams? Yes. This is a yes. this is a classic sneaky get up spot for Atlanta, uh, who's coming off a loss. And again, they're not a great team, but this is a divisional game, so I I think they will get up. Six is just just high enough that's going to tickle my interest. Well, that's what they want because Atlanta. You you mentioned how the Saints own the Bucks. Yeah. Well, the Saints own the Falcons too. One and six uh, ATS to Atlanta is in their past seven meetings. Three and seven, their last ten trips to New Orleans. I'm laying the points here. I think it's going to be Taysom Hill. I think they're going to be able to run the ball down Atlanta's throat, and I think their defense has figured something out. Because sure, it might just be a Tampa thing, but if it works against Tampa, this Atlanta team is trash. I watched that game last week. I can't fade. I can't back them. I'm. I'm. It feels like I'm chalky this week, Sean. Yeah. I mean, if you bring up your uh, your precious uh, public uh, money splits, Ryan, can't imagine the public isn't hammering New Orleans Saints right now. Let me uh, pull that up. While you're doing that, Ryan, perfect time to shout out PropSwap.com. Oh man, PropSwap's been uh, with us for a long time now. Love their support, appreciate them, and really, it's it's a great idea. I mean. When you hear about prop swap, you're like, why didn't I think of that? Why not I a marketplace where you can buy and sell real sports betting tickets? And again, shout out to the uh, guy who listed his Mike White ticket on prop swap. It was one thousand to win one hundred twenty five thousand. He got an offer for seventy thousand. He said, no deal. Let it ride in true hashtag digits only fashion. But again, uh, if you would have sold it. And and certainly people do sell you know these uh, tickets. I mean, buying that ticket for seventy thousand dollars would have been a great steal. So if you're looking to get the best price on a sports bet, 
uh, buy someone else's hedge essentially or if you're looking to hedge out you have some futures that are looking pretty good uh, maybe you got a you know the New York Giants under you bet a lot of money in the New York Giants under it's basically cash you can head over to propswap.com list it over there and if you use promo code SGP they will double up your first deposit up to five hundred dollars propswap.com promo code S G P all right, Sean. We got a short afternoon slate. Only three mm-hmm. games. One of them, your Philadelphia Eagles hosting the Los Angeles Chargers. Three and a half on the look ahead. Road favorites, the Chargers. Now only two. Minus one thirty on the money line. Philly plus one ten. Fifty is the total. Heard a couple uh birdies chirp in my ear from the underverse that uh some large, large, sharp money coming in on the Eagles early. Really? In this one, yeah, but uh, yeah, I, I just this Chargers team is always going to be undervalued on the road, overvalued at home. They don't have a home field. They travel well, and I just out of principle, Philly coming off a huge win. People, I mean, even you're feeling yourself a little bit. Uh, the you know the diehard Eagles podcast got recorded a little earlier in the week. Uh, Fletcher Cox chirping off. Uh, I don't know. I I don't know if this is going to be the spot where the Eagles um, go back to back here against a team that's kind of been struggling and they've shown a little bit more than they have uh, uh, early than they have of late from the offense. I can't. I mean, as long as this is short of three, I'm here. I go being chalky again. Chalk, chalk. Give me the Chargers here. Are you gonna get get your erasers, Ryan? Start clapping. There's there's a lot of chalk in the studio. Call me Ashy Larry. I'm sorry. Are you coming (laughs) off back uh, two and zero on your locks? No, okay. I went one and one, but I did give Let's out a him. plus fifteen hundred <laughs> money line dog parlay. That's why you got to turn into the uh, tune into the Periscope. We give out our uh, parlays there, the Periscope parlay uh, Periscope. pregame for the yeah. NFL show pre-game nine a.m. Periscope now dead though. You're yes. you're dating yourself, Sean. No, check us out on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash Sports Gambling Podcast. Here's what I like about the Eagles situation: they just released Eric Wilson, who was a really shitty linebacker, and linebacker play is gonna matter in this matchup. TJ Edwards had a really good game against the Lions, and I know you're saying, "Oh, it's the Lions," but DeAndre Swift is a pretty good running back and and they did a pretty good job slowing him down. If they can do a similar uh if they can remain aggressive on the defensive side and and keep pressuring Justin Herbert who clearly struggles with the blitz. I mean, the Ravens kind of drew up the playbook on how you beat this chargers team. You pressure Justin Herbert. You don't sit back. So Jonathan Gannon isn't a huge fucking pussy and we'll see. Uh, And he continues to bring the pressure. I like the Eagles chances to cover two points. Now, if you listen to the dire Eagles podcast, I did predict the Eagles would lose wink, wink 27 to 26. Why are we? Oh, we're all yeah, I got I got I got to keep it going that I'm picking against the Eagles although 2 points way too much. Chargers are dead last, Ryan, in your uh, defensive rush DVOA by a wide yeah. wide margin. So this is a this is a Boston Scott game. This maybe even Jordan Howard continues to pound the rock. Uh Jalen Hurts gets loose. We get some turnovers. The, to me really the the reason this is a interesting spot for the Eagles is the Eagles are 0 and 3 at home so far. They have not gotten a win at home. Their what last, their is? last ro- home win. I, well, I think part of it is the teams they played. I mean, granted, they probably sh- they probably should have beat that San Francisco team. Left a lot of plays on the board, and then they had the Chiefs and the uh, Bucks, who they didn't match up great against uh, either of those teams. So I think one was the the competition, and they blew that 49ers game. I, I think they're just. I would be shocked if the Eagles start 0 and 4 at home this season. This is a get right spot for them at home against this Chargers team who's clearly kind of falling apart a little bit. Again, I am predicting the Eagles to lose, but I think plus two is is way too big of a number. This kind of feels like the, the game where you bet uh whoever wins the first half to win the game. Uh, I think if the Eagles get up, it's because they've gotten out early and they can't stop the run. And I think if the Chargers get ahead, it could be difficult for Philly to because that's really what the Chargers are trying to do, and we saw it early in the year. When they get out ahead, it's tough to keep running against them, and that's what you know. Then the defense flourishes. But when you can keep it a game, 
the defense really hasn't shown up. But yeah, I think this well, is and, just and uh, this is just a class difference in team. That's what I would you, say. Uh, Nick's checking in on YouTube. Can the Eagles actually hold off the speedy receivers of the Chargers? I would say it's our tough match. Uh, our cornerback play has actually been pretty good. Uh, what our struggle has been has been uh, at the safety position and at the linebacker position. So I'm more worried about a you know even like T.J. Hawkinson again. A lot of it was garbage time, but he had a massive day. I'm worried about either Parham, uh, Jared Cook. I think we could have trouble with those guys or Eckler coming out of the backfield in the middle of the field. I think we'll actually be able to hang enough with Mike Williams, who's been struggling, and Keenan Allen on the outside. Be a pass rush thing. If we, if they can get home, they'll be fine. If not, we'll see Mike. Big and, Mike and Williams. And Williams, the uh, the rookie out of uh, I, I think Memphis. Um, he looked really good. He got his first sack of the game. Very disruptive in the um, in the defensive backfield. And the defensive line is kind of coming alive. And maybe the fact that they were talking about trading Fletcher Cox and they didn't, that's another rallying point for this Eagles team. All right. We're disagreeing a lot again this week. It's good. Worked out for us last week. Both had winning weeks. Sean Green Bay coming off Thursday night football. They're heading to Kansas City. This is an old AFC West rivalry. No, just kidding. Kansas City coming off Monday Night Football, which is a bad uh, or a good situation. 11 2 against the spread, 10 and 3 straight up on the season. Feels like that's just quirky, but Kansas City's now seven and a half, Sean, because of course, Aaron Rodgers, uh, even though he's immunized, he's not uh, vaccinated, <laughs> so he's going to have to sit out this game at least. Green Bay's up to plus 250. Kansas City's minus 300. 49 is the total. I mean, look, uh, yeah. We have the good looking, strapping young backup Life coming in. Through the hourglass, so are the days of our lead. That scoundrel, Aaron Rodgers. Did he lie or did he just deceive the NFL and the media? I'm immunized, but am I vaccinated? He'll turn. I'm not vaccinated, and I won't be playing. Enter Jordan Love. So, uh, for some reason, I remember the preseason being a lot about uh, beat writers questioning what the deal with this Jordan Love guy was. He not really looking like a first round pick. Now I'm hearing things like he had a great training camp. He's gonna he's gonna do great in his first start here against the Chiefs defense that hasn't exactly been great. Uh, this number. I know some people like so. What? Where did this number actually open? I was seeing like uh, uh, one and a half. So it only moved six points. One and a half to a half. Yeah, it, but it moved. You could. I mean, I was even seeing some halves. I think it went. I I read it went to pick them. So people were betting the Packers basically. Yeah, I think it opened at like two and a half, probably even, and people were betting it enough that they were slowly lowering it down. And then the Aaron Rodgers news came. And they had a, they took it off the board, reopened it at a plus seven and a half. That's what we're picking it at. I mean, uh, I think, I don't know. What do you think it's going to keep going up? Cause I'm all over the Packers plus seven and a half. I mean, uh, you know, is Jordan love better than Danny dimes? I mean, we'll, we'll, we're going to find out Sunday disrespectful. Um, certainly Tyreek Hill could have a massive day don't, for the chiefs. I, I do worry about this. I, I worry about the fact that that offense is so badly, like just for Aaron Rodgers Cause it's, it's all about these like precision back shoulder throws to Devonte Adams. And, and you know, perhaps I could be wrong and the offense will come out and the ball will be distributed and Jordan love will look good. And Aaron, Aaron Jones has a big game. They lean on him, but I, why, why did this not go to eight and a half? Nine, like, isn't Aaron Rodgers worth eight plus points on the spread? Yeah, isn't it like, isn't this number still short of where it should be? Um, I, I know a lot of people probably, are getting yeah. cute and saying, "Oh, you know, great time to take the pack." Really? Yeah, Jordan Love. We have no, you have no idea what you're about to get from that guy. Well, again, this this Chiefs team continues to turn the ball they over. Don't cover continues spreads. to str struggle. Five and fifteen against the spread in their last twenty. I'm tired of. Of putting Chiefs in anything, and the Packers team are like the kind of a good team, you know. Enter the Ewing theory as well with this game where no Aaron Rodgers. What better way to kind of? I mean, we've seen uh, Aaron Rodgers. Would you be surprised if Aaron Rodgers was a pain in the ass to work with? And now you kind of have a 
a chance to maybe stick it to him a little bit. Devontae Adams uh, should be back off the COVID list. But again, keep an eye on this because God, I want nothing to do with this game. Really? I like Green Bay plus seven and a half. I, I think they're going to show up. And Kansas City just <sighs> isn't, they're not the Kansas City of old. We, we got to stop I, I being know in, I know in denial. I know that. But I also. So as I look at this game, I, I simply like I, I think if it was ten, okay, uh, seven and a half, it feels like we're getting cute. Um, uh, yeah, give me Kansas City. I think it's going to be a blowout. Kansas City, like it would be one thing if this was a like Kansas City was doing well, but this just feels like a game that if Green Bay can't run the ball and sustain long drives, the, Jordan Love's not going to look good. That's my prediction. Like the well, and it's this very, is a square it's very sharp easy to uh, pick on Sorensen, uh, Aaron Jones, Ryan. I mean, when we're talking DFS, Aaron Jones was going to have a massive day. I still think he's going to have a massive day. It's not like you can just load the box against Aaron Jones. He's not some just basic power runner. He can get it done in the uh, you know catching the ball out of the backfield. AJ Dillon, we haven't even talked about him. I do think Derek Gore could be an interesting. Uh, I'm coming, getting a little cute with some of these DFS pivots, but Derek Gore could be interesting as well. He seemed to get a lot of the goal line stuff um, for the Chiefs there. But again, I, I I would wait a little bit until closer to the game because the COVID was in the QB room, so you don't want to end up not having a quarterback on on your uh, bet there. So if you like the Packers, I'd wait it out. I, I yeah I, I shit that what they've covered like twice in their past sixteen games the Chiefs uh, but I'm laying seven and a half let's go horrible against the spread let's go Arizona coming off Thursday night against those Packers which by the way Sean tune in the street which the the Madden Sims are back will be uh, will be lot yeah. <laughs> Meant to hit that uh, one we'll be live about an hour before kickoff to do yeah. a little sim. See if we can't predict the game score. The total. Last predicted. time we did the simulated Madden game, nailed it. Green Bay to win by three in the Check. sim. Green Bay won by three in the actual game. Green Bay and the cards hit the under and in the uh, sim and in the actual game. So let John Madden show us the way, Ryan. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. I really, I, I really hate. Uh, uh, oh, one more thing about the Kansas City Green Bay. Uh, Green. Does have a look ahead. It matters, and they are back to back road spot. So mm. there's that trend again. All right, Arizona coming off Thursday night football. They're heading to San Francisco, where San Francisco is a one point dog, plus one hundred on the money line. Arizona minus one twenty, forty five and a half is the total. This is still out there. Uh, I, I think Kyler Murray is not going to play. And at this point, yeah. I, if I have access to San Francisco plus points, I'm gra if I have access to San Francisco at anything minus two and a half or better, I'm taking it right now. Colt McCoy's the backup. Colt McCoy's probably a fine backup, but he's not Kyler Murray. And Cliff Kingsbury is just not the kind of coach I want uh, having to deal with a backup quarterback uh, or anyone that isn't Kyler Murray and can make you look good uh, even when your game plan sucks. So. Arizona, uh, I, I like. I don't know who's running to bet on them at this number. Also, could we have seen the top of the mountain? And now we're having another Kyler has some injuries, going to be banged up. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because if, no JJ if, Kyler, if Kyler was healthy, I I do like the cards here because you you saw how San Francisco struggled with an athletic quarterback who ran the ball a lot with Justin Fields, but. If Kyler does play and he he's not going to be healthy, I don't think he'll be running a lot. So now you have a immobile, uh, immobile Kyler Murray. I, I think you're almost better off if you're the uh, if you're the cards here, almost going with Colt McCoy, assuming he's as immobile as we think, and just building up a different game plan. And and Cardinals defense, you know, we were hanging out with the former site editor uh, Ryan McKee. Oh. And uh, he's a huge Cards fan, and he was saying <laughs> our run defense didn't look the no. same without JJ Watt. Now I thought JJ Watt was totally cooked, but no, he, he I mean he obviously he was mattered. obviously obviously helping this team out. Uh, Cardinals do come off the mini buy here, but I think as we're picking this as a 49ers home dog plus one, I think I think you got to take the 49ers. They're getting um, 
you know, they're team. getting George Kittle back, which will be great for uh, blocking, not not catching touchdowns. He does make their team a lot better, Sean. He is he is uh, good. He's good. He's not good in fantasy, but he's good. He player. just doesn't sustainably put up stats that you'd want to bet overs on his totals or draft him in fantasy. Exactly. Uh, teams off Thursday night five and nine straight up. So the mini We're not buy, getting the, the mini buy bump. It has not been uh, has not been great. I, I think you have to take San Francisco here. Not much else to handicap. And, and I, I think don't be surprised. Like Kyler is not playing this weekend, Sean. Guaranteeing it. No. Tennessee heads to Los Angeles, where the Rams are now laying seven and a half. This look ahead was four and a half. It moved a bunch. Uh, some say Derrick Henry's worth a two to three points on the number. That seems aggressive to me. Minus three forty on the money line. Tennessee plus two eighty. Fifty four is the total. Ah oh, man, Tennessee's pass defense has been trash. This is a little bit of a letdown spot. Would you say? You look at that Tennessee schedule. Uh, you, you realize what Tennessee's just done? Buffalo, check. Kansas City, check. Indy, check. Three massive wins in a row. Now you have a second. Oh, back to back road spot. There you go, Sean. Mm. Non conference. So, so your your angle is that Tennessee is just gonna. When does the let it in? No, the it's more just like when does the the natural letdown happen? I well, I think I think they've you, played I, three massive games against. They're they're key they're key targets in the conference and division. Hear, hear me out, Ryan. I think if Derrick Henry was in this game, then. They would be a letdown spot. However, now that the big dog is out, oh, I, I mean, like that th- angle. Th- these these are grown men. These are men willing to put their dick on the line well, for a Super Bowl. At least one man. And you're saying, oh, oh, we lost the running back. Hey, better pack it in. Call it a season. You don't think this Titans team? This we've seen this Titans team. They're very much a team, and they hashtag tighten up. This is a perfect tighten up spot for this Tennessee team. Now I know they're going to put Ramsey on AJ Brown. This could actually be a Julio, Julio game. Julio has returned to practice, and the defense has quietly got better with the Titans. It's not just like one particular guy, whatever. It's a team that comes together. They get stops when they need to. They got stops against the goal line, against the Bills. They got plenty of stops uh, against the Chiefs. Now they're going on the road. I think they can hang with this Rams team. And what do they have next week, Sean? A little Monday night matchup against the Niners. And yeah, they, it could be a look ahead spot for Sean the Rams. Sean McVay has his buddy Shanahan on deck. So, look, his natural I, enemy. I this is a real this is a uh, this is all about the number to me. I'm going to take the seven and a half, but but I don't like, at some point, and I like your your counter to why this won't be a letdown spot. But at some time, at some point, this team has to have a letdown, right? They did the Jets. They lost to the New York but, Jets, but, but since then they've just been lighting up. T- like they're a in good key team. Spots, I, are they? Yeah. If Stafford if Stafford lights them up, I'm going to be very disappointed in myself. Chicago. Oh, that was Sunday night football. I apologize. Monday night football. The Bears. They're heading to Pittsburgh. This is an old timey, uh, weird accent city game. <laughs> Yins. Line, minus six and a half, minus two eighty on the money line, plus two forty for the Bears. Forty is the total. Oh God, this is gross. This this is one of the grosser games because on one hand, Justin Fields against this Steelers defense. You really want any of that action, Sean? No, no. Chicago, look ahead to the bye. You want any of that action? No. Matt Nagy back on the sideline. You want the, some of that action? No. But can you really take the Steelers laying six and a half points against anyone? They're they almost is, covered last week if it was six and a half. I mean, have, we've seen Roethlisberger, right? It's it's a fun. Oh, he's good looking guy still, you know. You want to talk about letdown spots? They just went into Cleveland, yeah. showed that they're still better than the big bad Browns coming off their bye. I think this is. I mean, this just feels like similar to that. Uh, it, it's it feels, prime time though, like. Yeah, right. And doesn't it feel like that Seattle? I mean, what what is really different between the Seattle Steelers game and this Bears Steelers game? To me, it feels like the same game. It's Joe, a very Geno up- Smith is way better than Justin Fields. All right. See, now you're just being insanely uh, biased, Ryan. Uh, G- and we actually <laughs> saw something decent about Justin Fields last week. Some like wild plays where you're like, okay, I get why they drafted this guy so high. Yeah, but that was with the the bad play calling coach not there, right? No, and and maybe Matt Nagy <laughs> messes it up. But I think there's enough there's enough wiggle out of uh, out of Justin Fields to keep this interesting. 
I mean, it'll all depend on whether or not uh, TJ Watt gets a strip sack. If he does, I, I think just, maybe they cover. This I, just this this game is going to be twenty one seventeen. No one's going to watch want to watch this game. Why did the line move two and a half points? What did you see so so great about the Steelers? They won an ugly game by five points. That felt like th- them getting fifteen points on the road. That felt like. Th- the, the the max. I mean, can the Steelers team get to twenty one points? It's a similar. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that angle. It, it, it is another tougher defensive matchup. What's their team total? Twelve? Like, um, <laughs> I mean, really? Have we? The Pittsburgh is horrible. But but their 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 kicker got the shit kicked out of him. Who's kicking for this team? They, I mean, he might be in the protocol. He should be. Guy got damn near got his head ripped off. 32nd pass DVOA this this Bears team 16th and run the if they can run the ball they can look like a competent yeah. team they're facing the Steelers number six, havoc and to the point of yeah I, I agree with you the offense may struggle to score 21 points but I think the defense gets in the end zone I'm I, Super chalky this week, but yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm laying the points here. I mean, is there is there any favorites you didn't like here? One, two, three, four, five. I took five dogs. Yeah, but some of these dogs. I mean, are you really going to get credit for the Denver dog? Yeah, or the Giants dog? <laughs> Those dogs were baked in. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I mean, dogs are sixty five and forty niners. Dogs are sixty-five and fifty-six on the season. Regression's yeah. coming. You just hurt your own point. Regression's coming means dogs are gonna lose. Yeah, I only have five of them. I have more favorites. Thank you. Oh wait, I did that backwards. <laughs> You're right. Wait, how are the dogs favored? I feel like it. Or why? How have the dogs been winning so much? Public dogs. It's it's oh, more it's right. more of the public that's the sharps had a week last week. Finally, yeah, finally. us sharps, Ryan, finally got it together. All right. Any other uh, closing thoughts on Bears Steelers? No, I, I, they just can't put up any points. Yeah. And it sounds like Khalil Mack is. So last week you're like, oh, you can't lay that many points with Jimmy G. And I said, cool. I'm just fading Justin Fields. Boom. Yeah. And they shouldn't have lost that game. <laughs> they lost by 11. I cashed my ticket. Let, <laughs> I told you it was a bad lock. You didn't listen to me. All right. Let's lock it up. You, I think you went first last week. That seemed to go well for us. Time for our lock, dog, and tease. And of course, bonus lock, newly added bonus lock. All right. A lot of interesting stuff here to get into. Man, I kind of, is Buffalo minus 14 too obvious? I mean, we had Buffalo last time laying a big number. You know what? I'm not going to get away from this Bills team. Jacksonville is fucking horrible. And. They do not. Uh, Buffalo doesn't have a look ahead spot. It feels, it feels safe to me. It really does. Now, as far as my second lock, have we double locked anything yet this year? No. Is that dangerous? Yeah. Don't do that, Ryan. Don't. You're playing with fire. I actually do really like the Bears. You're crazy. Uh, I like the Packers. So you're gonna lock up the Bears again. You didn't learn anything last week. No, I, I shouldn't do that again. I feel like I should learn. Fucking jabron. Do I lock up the Raiders? Giants at home are so bad. No, you're 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 being a simpleton right now. You understand what you need to do here. Uh, let's see. Give me. Uh, Get back to our roots. Double digits with a man with gloves. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. I'm just gross. gonna hear it from Cowboys fans. You know what? Fuck Cowboys fans. Give me the Denver plus ten. Double lock. <laughs> Kiss my ass, Cowboy Nation. For my dog, outright dog. Ooh, there's some outright dogs I really like. I mean, Houston's interesting, and that really helps the Eagles draft pick. Uh, Atlanta's kind of a frisky dog. Green Bay. Mm. No, that's stupid. Tennessee. You're insane if you're going to bet on Jordan Love this week. I'll go. Uh, Ryan Tannehill gets it done. Let's go Tennessee plus two eighty for my tees. Gonna take some, uh, yeah. Why don't we go in uh, Indy down? Uh, I can't fuck with Indy. <laughs> they're they're a garbage team. Uh, let's see. Give me give me Cleveland up to eight and a half. That feels right. 
No, B- Baker's freed from Odell. Love that narrative. Chicago up to 12 and a half. Like, I mean, it's kind of crazy, but Pittsburgh's not going to be able to put up points. <laughs> She's just here, an absolute maniac. And uh, Buffalo tees him down to eight. Come on, let's go. All right, what do you got? All right, let's be extra diabolical. First lock, give me Cleveland plus two and a half. Second lock, give me Miami minus six and a half. Ooh. Dog. <sighs> you know, the dogs on the card, I, I don't have a ton. But neither one of us has really gone out there and done something for the D gens lately. So here's what I'm going to do. I did hit a 15 to one money line dog parlay, Ryan, Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> with his gloves on let's go against an undefeated ATS team with Dick a quarterback with a bum wheel McCarthy's decision-making <laughs> Vic Fangio draws it up. They finally got that tool Von Miller out of the building. Come Denver on. The Von Miller narrative is strong. Three. 50 dog. on the money line. Dog. Tees. Browns, eight and a half. Yeah. What else you got? I'm really, really tempted to uh get <sighs> Bills eight. I I was gonna lock up the Bills. I like that you took it though. Makes me feel Someone good about one to. of your locks. Uh I like the other one too. <laughs> yeah, you took it to win outright. <laughs> Can't shit on and, it. And uh, Kansas City minus one and a half. Kansas City minus one Actually, and a half. Yeah, I'm not, I, I I'm gonna leave the Niners to if you can tease the Niners, especially if you can find a one and a half, that's super fun right now. What's the other uh so for our uh th- circa millions, what's the other consensus pick we should toss in there? <sighs> Obviously playing both of our dogs. Oh, you know what? Uh Tennessee plus seven and a half. Uh well uh, let's talk about this. We have Baltimore or we could fire on Thursday night. I, uh, you don't want to fire on Thursday night. Yeah, let's take Tennessee. All right, Ryan. What is the? Uh, I I feel like we need another uh, bet. Oh, you know what, Ryan? Pull up the point spread song. We got to listen to it. Oh man, it, it right. blessed us last time. We got to listen to it. And if we don't, con- do we throw out the point spread bet that we have to hit three out of the four of our locks to keep it a lot to so that we don't have to sing it? Or what's the other? Uh, what's the other bet we throw out there? What's the other potential punishment? I don't know. You why do you want punishment? You want to you want to punish yourself? No. No, the whole idea is we got to uh, go understand. 3 and 1 but, but or we already, punish. We already made our picks. We already I already motivated myself to make good picks. Sure, let's uh you want to go 3 3 out of 4 again? Yes. But what is the punishment? We have it's the same punishment, isn't okay. it? Okay. The points we got to do a, I mean people want a remix. Have you not looked at social media? They want the remix. Let's go. All right, right, but let's 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 hear a little bit of it before we close the show out. Clearly, I was not prepared for this, so give me a second. While Ryan gets that ready, make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the pregame show where I gave out a massive dog. Kramer gives out his uh, first half parlay, do some late DFS, and of course, answering all your questions, late gambling stuff, fantasy stardom, sit them. Anything you guys want to get into kicks off 9 a.m. Pacific time exclusively on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Turn on the notifications so you never uh, miss when we go live. Obviously, drop us a nice uh, rating and review over on Apple Podcasts, and uh, you got a nice chance to win every Monday, aka Merch Monday. Ryan, shall we? Oh, yeah. I'll be so pissed. Oh Lord, please help me cover the spread. I bet my last time and I'm waiting with dread. Oh Lord, please help me. Thank you for participating the in the Sports Gambling Podcast. I bet the money line on my parlay card. The odds are fine. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Sean. Four and oh this week, baby. Kramer, let it ride.